What is up everybody? Welcome back. So this is going to be a direct follow-up from the last video we had where we explored from first principles what a call option even is. Towards the end of that video we hinted that there's many different things that can affect the premium you pay as the buyer of a call option. A couple of those that we called out were the strike price. We said that the lower the strike price is, that means that I as the buyer get to buy this asset for less money in the future. And that means that the premium I pay now to secure that right is going to be higher. We also said that the expiration date gets further into the future. That means that I, as the buyer of the call option, have more time, more flexibility in which to exercise this option, and so I have to pay more. The premium will be higher right now. We also hinted at maybe there's some kind of attributes of the underlying asset, maybe something about the price of the underlying asset, or maybe more importantly, the volatility, the change in price of the underlying asset that is also going to affect the premium I pay for these various call options today. And so what we're going to do today is take all of those notions, all of those trends, and put them into actual data. So first things first, just to set the stage, let's take a look at for a couple of ticker symbols, the amount you would pay, the premium you would pay for various different combinations of strike prices and expiration dates. So here we see all that data for Apple stock represented in this heat map. On the rows here, you see the different expiration dates. So you see that the earliest one is March 8th, 2024. And the latest one available here is July 18th, 2026. So you can see that the expiration dates available to you are very far into the future, potentially. You also see a very big range of strike prices down here, going all the way from $100, going all the way up to $300. And this black line right here shows the price of Apple stock today. So notice that some of these strike prices are above the current price of the stock and others are below. Now the colors in each cell in this diagram indicate the premium you would pay for that call option that is composed of that combination of expiration date and strike price. And we have a legend here on the right, so green means cheaper call options, lower premiums, and red means more expensive call options, higher premiums. So what trends do we note in this chart? Well, one thing we definitely see is as the strike price gets lower, so as you go from the right-hand side of this diagram to the left-hand side of this diagram, you definitely see this gradation going from green, very cheap call options when you have to pay a lot to exercise that option, going down to very, very expensive when you only have to pay a little bit when you choose to exercise that option. And so this lines up perfectly with what we thought in theory in the last video at the beginning of this video. This puts some numbers into that perspective and shows that there actually is a very, very big range of premiums you would pay based on the strike price that you're willing to accept here. And it seems like that horizontal movement is even more pronounced than the vertical movement, although there is definitely vertical movement in this chart as well. And what we mean by that vertical movement now is pick any of these strike prices, so let's say 140, so we're just looking at this column here. So for this column, we see that if the expiration date is very, very soon, so next week or in the next couple weeks, we see that the price we have to pay is relatively lower than the price we have to pay as we go down this column and as our expiration date gets further and further and further into the future. Again, this lines up very well with the theory we said where the further into the future you buy a call option, the more time you have in order to exercise that option. And for that extra time, you have to pay extra money in the form of a higher premium today. But as we were saying before, going from the top to bottom of this chart doesn't seem to be as drastic of a color change, as different of a price change, as going from the right to the left of this chart. Of course, we should probably take a look at a couple of other stocks to make sure that this trend is not holding just for Apple stock. So here's Google stock. One difference you'll notice here is that the different number of strike prices available and the different number of expiration dates available do vary from stock to stock. And so we see that this chart here is smaller than this chart over here. But we see the same general trend, which is that going from right to left, we get more expensive premiums, and the same thing, going from top to bottom, we get more expensive premiums. Same thing for Tesla, which is the exact example that we used in our first video where we explained call options. Here we say that there's a vast number of expiration dates and a vast number of strike prices available, but we see the same exact trend. In the top right of this diagram, where you have very soon expiration dates and very high strike prices, it's very, very cheap because that's the least in your advantage as a buyer of a call option. And at the bottom left, 
we have those call options where you'd have to pay very little to exercise it and you have all the time in the world to exercise it. And so you're gonna have to pay a lot of money for that right now. So now we do understand that the strike price and expiration date definitely play a tangible role in the price or premium of a call option. The natural next question for me at least is, are those the only things that matter? If I pin down a particular strike price and if I pin down a particular expiration date, can I perfectly predict what the premium is going to be for a call option with those combinations? And to start answering that, let's do exactly that. Let's pin down a strike price and let's pin down an expiration date. So we're gonna pin down an expiration date of the 20th of September, 2024, which is later this year, about six months from now. And we're gonna pin down a strike price. And so because stocks have different prices, we're gonna pin down a strike price not as a fixed dollar amount, but as a fixed percentage offset from the spot price or the current price of each stock in the S&P 500. So that is to say we're gonna fix that the strike price should be equal to the spot price of any of the stocks in the S&P 500 plus 5% of that spot price. And given that strike price for each stock and given the fixed expiration date we've listed right here, we're gonna plot a distribution of the premium that you'd have to pay for a call option with those parameters divided by the spot price of each stock in the S&P 500. And the reason we're plotting a distribution of this ratio instead of plotting just the distribution of the premium price is the same reason that we just noted before, which is that stocks occur on many different price ranges, but what should be constant is the ratio between the premium you would pay for a call option and the actual price of the underlying asset. And so that's exactly the distribution of which we're plotting today. If the only things that affected call option prices, the only thing that affected premiums, were the strike price and the expiration date, we would expect this distribution to be very, very narrow, to have a very, very small variability. That is not what we see, folks, in this chart above. We see that there is a very big variability. Even when we pin down the expiration date, even when we pin down the relative strike price, there's a very big variability in the ratio between the premium of a stock and the spot price of that stock today. It can range anywhere between, well, 0% and 14%, which indicates that there's at least one other pretty big factor that we're missing. When we try to figure out the premium of a call option beyond just the expiration date and beyond just the strike price. And so that's where our gears start turning and we think about, well, what else could affect the premium of a call option? And one very big thing that we haven't talked about yet that we only briefly alluded to in the beginning of this video is the underlying volatility of the asset that you are buying the call option for. And to understand that, let me pose a theoretical thought exercise. Let's say that you have pinned down a relative strike price and you've pinned down an expiration date. Now let's say you have two assets. One varies quite a bit. It's been known historically, its stock price jumps up and down all the time, takes very big swings downward and very big swings upward. The other one is much more stable and consistent over time. Which of these would you pay more of a premium in order to obtain a call option for? And if we think about that for a second, the logic would probably go something like this. Well, looking at the stock that is very volatile over time historically, it has low lows, but it also has high highs, which means that when I fix that strike price, because of the extreme volatility of that stock, it is much more likely to hit above the strike price that I have set. Versus the other one, it's much more stable over time, and generally we do consider stability a good thing, but in this case, because we really need the price of that stock to go above the strike price we set, that stability is gonna make that a lot harder because that stability in this case is actually gonna get in the way and stop us potentially from realizing that high strike price that we bought the call option for. So we actually realize that the more volatile an underlying asset is, the more money we would be willing to pay for a call option of that asset, even after fixing an expiration date and even after fixing a relative strike price. And that story that we just told through logic and words, we actually see reflected very, very interestingly in data. So here what we've plotted are three different plots at three different volatility horizons. The one on the very left here is looking at the 90 day return volatility of all the stocks in the S&P 500. The middle one is looking at the 30 day return volatility of the stocks in the S&P 500. And the last one here on the right is looking at the seven day return volatility. And by return volatility, we mean every day for the last seven days or 30 days or 90 days, we're gonna be looking at the stock's return relative to the previous day and we're gonna be taking the standard deviation of all of those returns. 
So we see some very interesting patterns here. One thing across the board is that these all have positive correlations. So this row here is the correlation coefficient. We see that it's 0.83, we see that it's 0.75, and we see that it's 0.6, all comfortably positive numbers, which mean that the volatility of a stock, the historical volatility of a stock, is positively correlated with this y-axis variable, which is again that premium divided by the spot price of the stock. Which is to say it just confirms the theory that we had that says the more volatility, the more historical volatility a stock has, the more I'm going to need to pay to obtain a call option of that stock, all else held constant. Now the other very nuanced thing that was really, really interesting to me is that the shorter your volatility horizon, the smaller that correlation gets, the less confidence we have in this relationship. So if we look at this very left-hand one, looking at the volatility over the last 90 days, that has a pretty high correlation coefficient of 0.83 with this premium divided by spot price. If we shrink that to 30 days, that correlation gets smaller at 0.75. And you can see that visually. Here we see a very tight linear looking relationship. That linear relationship still exists in this middle one, but it's much looser and looser still when we look at this just seven day volatility. So what that seems to indicate to me is that when you think about pricing these call options, we care more about what has the volatility of the stock been reliably over the last 90 days, over the last three months. And really given this pattern, what we should do is increase this 90 days to six months or one year or several years and take a look at how high this correlation could actually get. So this plot is basically just to say that there is this definite positive relationship between the volatility of the underlying asset and the premium of a call option on that underlying asset. So this video is gonna be a bridge which takes us down two different but very related paths in the next videos we're gonna make. And one of those is very similar to the videos we have been making on using data science and machine learning techniques to buy and sell stocks. We're gonna be doing something very similar with call options and so it's very important to understand the features that could be really, really important to feed into such models. And the other path we're gonna go down is a more theoretical one about how are call options theoretically priced in the real world. So this gets us to things like the Black-Scholes equation, a very popular equation that uses factors like these in order to figure out what the ideal or optimal premium is gonna be for not just call options, but all sorts of different options. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe for more videos just like this. Any comments are of course welcome in the section below. Thanks for watching and I'll see all you wonderful people next time.